G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here, and in this video we're going to review the JM Bricklayer 30001 3-in-1 Medieval Weapon Kit. This consists of a catapult, blister, and a bombard. We will start with an unboxing of the set and then look at the features of the three builds and any other items of note. Following this, we will then review the set overall in terms of build experience, value for money, displayability, playability, and then finishing off with an overall score for this set. This was provided to us by the manufacturer, but the opinions and review scores will be our own. There may also be an affiliate link around the video for which we may receive something, which helps the channel to keep making videos such as these. So let's get into it. So this is how it arrived to me. I have an outer mailer and then the actual box inside bubble wrapped so I'll just crack this open here it is the packaging here it looks like it's got some of the parts of it are shiny and then just the black background and it's the remarkable ancient machines 30,001, 568 pieces, three in one. So you can see the three different ones there. Having a look over on the back. The back is just straight up and down details. Uh, a few little other bits and pieces there. Again, the three different models on the side. And more general details. And one of them on the other side there. Looks like it's got a little target as well. So overall, a relatively nice presentation. A bit shame the box is a little banged up. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Thanks. So with everything laid out, we have the box there, and then we have the seven numbered bags, instruction book, four wheels, and the additional bag with the rubber bands and elastics. So having a look at the instruction book, it's got a nice weight to it, nice glossy finish. It looks like it just uh, general information and then straight into the building. Looks like some pretty standard instructions. What's that? It's that showing you how to fire that one. And then I guess this is then the start of the next one. So that's interesting. 116 and 117 starts the next build. Then 200 and 30 from looks at you know, build the last one. Build the target on the back. So it all looks nice, clear, concise, and no sort of frills with it. Here we have the catapult design, which is really cool and it's pretty solid and chunky. Each of these main three pillars here you got the two on the angle and the one there all solid really supporting the structure and the mechanism you've got the spiky wheels which you can imagine during the day if that's rolling along and you're here it's going to slice you up on the front you've got another sort of aggressive spiky design as well and this is common to all three models so if you are building between them just take that piece off and don't take it completely apart because you can use it on the other one the color scheme is this sort of earthy retro sort of style. So you have these types of sand blues for the metallics and then you've got sort of the, the browns and the greens and the desaturated oranges for more sort of like woods. And then your elastics and rubber bands are generally in the black here. Speaking of elastics, we'll just come over here. I'll show you the mechanism in a moment, but you've got the main one is here, which is really, really taut and stretched. So the only thing I'd be a little concerned with is the longevity of the rubber bands, if you leave this sitting on a shelf for a long time, I know with other ones I've had, they can break down or really stretch in that. And in this case here, this one is actually, you're going to have to take half of this apart to have it like lying loose, whereas at least the ones on the back here controlling that sort of mechanism, you can just roll them straight off. and They wouldn't be too much of a problem to keep in a, a relatively loose state so you don't lose stretchiness over time. I've got this on a pretty frictionless type surface. So it does move pretty well, easily. So let's have a look at the main functioning mechanism. You've got the arm here, which is gonna go up and down. You can sort of see that rubber band in there moving about as you do that. And then in the back, you've got these, which sort of go up and down, and that's gonna be your catch mechanism for it being ready to fire. So we'll just try to get this down in here. That drops down. Try to lift both sides, make sure it catches there. 
So it's there, ready to be fired. Just move it over and then to fire it, you just press down and off it goes. Now to go find that thing. Found that thing down behind the radiator, which was fun. And it's actually just got a crisscross of these rubber pieces. Probably a good thing it's rubber because when the catapult fires, it's got a fair bit of kick to it. So if that was solid and that kept on hitting anything, you could imagine that that's going to make a mess of things, or at least this is somewhat a little bit safer. And this is the leftover pieces for the set, which feels to be about another third again. So it feels like they haven't really compromised the model and just made sure that they've had the appropriate number of pieces and types for each model to get it to work. This is a cool little target, simple, straightforward build, but just adds a little bit of extra dimension to it. So if you were getting good at these things, you could go through and try to hit it and practice doing that. And this is the brick separator, which comes with the model, which is kind of interesting, a little bit different. And not really sure what this is for, but it's got a little bit of flex and opens and closes. So I imagine it's to grab onto something. The only downside is it doesn't really have anything if you're trying to get studs off studs. So if you're trying to get these off, nothing really sits in there. Not like one of these ones where you can just put it on and get it off there. And here is the ballistic, or what you might think of as a giant crossbow on wheels. And the base structure, similar sort of design to the others. So again, you sort of got the wheels with the blades, some nasty little spikes and blades at the front there, and then the main difference is up here. Although this base is built in a different way too. The overall top superstructure mechanism is relatively straightforward. Just a couple of rubber bands, elastic bands in there. You're able to slide that main part back, which will lock in here when that flips up like that. And then just pushing down here is the release mechanism. And the firing works pretty consistent and is pretty good. Your missile as such is just a long rod with a cone type piece on the end. And that just slides straight in. And the firing mechanism is pretty straightforward. It's just be this piece here sliding along when that lifts up. The only slight building quirk I would say is when you're putting on these elastic bands. Again, they want you on page 308 when you do the step to basically thread it in and around through the pile on there, which there's just not enough clearance in there to actually do it. So I think, again, it's one of those things where it sounds like a good idea to do it digitally, but it's not until you actually do it. So I'd say back a couple of steps, about 295-ish, when you're doing this here, you should be threading that elastic band around there. So then when you put it in there, you can then get it. I had built the whole thing and then had to come back and pull this apart. And that was just a pain. It's not the end of the world, but it's just more of a hassle to have to come back and do that. Otherwise, everything else is pretty straightforward, as you'd expect. And again, this is just one of the ones where you wrap it around and then you pull this through and just connect it straight onto it. And it's pretty good to be able to hit the target, and it's pretty consistent. And here are all the leftover pieces, so you probably use maybe about half, but given that that superstructure sitting on the wheelbase is quite simple, it's not all that surprising. Here we have the Bombard, which is a good size, and it's nice and big and chunky, and it's pretty solid. The, the main mechanism sits on there pretty tight. Mm rolls relatively well. This is a pretty smooth frictionless surface. All around just some nice detailing, the spikes, chains, a little bit of greebling on the side, and the earthy wooden type colour scheme of sort of you know the browns, the oranges and the, the greens work quite well and make it sort of quite believable as something which is medieval. And this one's firing mechanism, you can come in here either side, there's a piece in here that you slide back. That piece here, it moves up and down, and we'll just clip into there, and then from the back here you have the release mechanism which you push down, and it fires out. Now this is probably where this model starts having a few little problems. I'm assuming that I built this correctly, which I'm pretty sure that I have. This is quite rigid in the way that it sits there. The way that you go about firing it, however, it does seem to have some pretty little quirks about it and things just have to be just right. On the back here, you've got a piece here, 
which if it goes down too far, it almost seems like it will catch when it goes to slide in. So try that again, like that. So it hit there and it didn't allow it to slide all the way through. And when I'm firing this, I'm holding it in a very particular way. When the kids first saw this and they went to fire it, it took about eight or nine goes because they could get it out. And even then I had to say, here, don't hold it there, hold it here sort of thing. Because a lot of the sliding mechanisms there, it seems to have very tight tolerances. And if it's not just spot on, it won't fire properly. So again, if we just go through and sort of see as I lifted that up, that slid back in and do that again. That locks down. If you have that all the way sort of down like that, when it goes to fire, you'll see that it'll get caught again. And then if I lift that piece up at the back, it then slides the rest of the way in. So with that one there, it seems to be there. You've got to have that kicked up a bit, but not too much, because then it seems like it'll hit that part there. So probably about 135 degree angle. You can sort of see that in there. You try that. And again, something got caught. And it almost seems like when you push this down, you can't push it down too much, otherwise when that slides in, it will get hit and caught again. So let's just try that again. That oh, might help if that goes all the way back in. Slap me up. Nope, still having an issue. So I'm just gonna make sure this time too that when you slide it in, you put it in as the way the instructions suggest. So maybe there's a bit too much friction if you do it one way as opposed to the other. Now that, push this mechanism all the way back down. Do the catch, make sure that's gone all the way in. That's up a little bit, let's push down. Nope, still having issues. Okay, let's give this another try. And what I'm gonna to try to do this time is actually with my fingers there, be lifting up when I push down, just so that it gives just a marginal bit of extra clearance for the mechanism to slide in. So I'll push this down here, I'll lift this up a bit, and then at the same time push down on that, and that seems to fire out much better. So I think that's where the design issue might be with this. Again, I'm pretty sure that this is built correctly because when you put these pieces in here, there's only certain ways for that to go. But I did notice, and I'll take the wheels off to show this, these side pieces, when they attach on, they seem to just slightly change the angle. So if I just detach these a little bit, because there's one on either side. So you can sort of see how all of that is sitting in there. So lift that up a little bit. Okay, so that should be more at rest there. So these positions seem fixed. These are pretty solid in there. Now what I find is if you just put these straight on, this little edge bit here will catch here. So we just try to put that on there. The natural tendency is for that not to be cleared. Like it's just a fraction of a millimeter. And then to put that on all the way, you kind of just got to lift it up ever so subtly. And that really seems to lock that into position. So there's no other ways, particularly when you put the other side on as well. Again, same sort of issue. I know it's not 100% aligned because the pins are not all the way in, but that's where you can, let's see if we can get this in here. Just in there, when I first put that on, it made an indent into that piece. That's in there. And that's sort of holding that whole piece in place and firm and rigid. And as I was sort of going through before, just when this mechanism slides in here, there's not a great deal of clearance in this back piece here when that comes out. Just get that to catch. So you've just got, where you've got on this square rectangular piece here, there's a few studs. And I know it's difficult to see, but this actually slides over the cross of those studs and that's going to be providing friction, which is going to be slowing down this release mechanism. Here's that the bit I was talking about before, and that's how it releases. Again, I could be encountering problems because I just haven't built this correctly, but if this is the way that it's meant to be, it just seems like the tolerances are just slightly off, which really slows down that mechanism. And as I said, you've got to be, you know, lifting this up and pushing that down at the same time. So you can sort of see how these pieces here are touching, and even if you move it around, you can kind of always see in there there's no sort of daylight or clearance through to the back and even on the other side 
again the same sort of thing there you know, it's, it's it's touching it but then if you look at the instructions or at least one of the pictures of it I know that this is generally the only thing you can really see I don't know whether this is a digital render but you can just see it looks like there's a bit of gap in there so that makes me either wonder if this is digital it's very easy to miss those tolerances or if I built it wrong that might explain it so there could be just a slight little issue there and there's no other real I suppose that's the other angle that you can see in there and again it looks like you can see through it so it has me a little stumped the other thing from experience is that these rubber bands or elastics here are really really taut so I think if you're storing this um, you'd probably want to do it so that those are just released like that because certainly I've had on other mocks that I've built elastics which have been stretched for a long time and you know after a couple of months of course when they've taught the whole time they're going to lose their elasticity and eventually they will just snap so I mean that's relatively easy to get on and off there because certainly when I built this it was late at night and then I'm filming this in the next morning so overnight I'd taken both of these off because the last thing I'd want is for them to, to sort of snap but you know that might just be something to be aware of the longevity of those if you leave them in that place for the most part this is pretty solid again I think the problems you'll find is when you're trying to use this mechanism here and you're grabbing onto it in weird places in particular these front bits here if you just move your fingers on them slightly they will come off relatively easy but these are just minor and then on this one here the ones on the edge you're only attached by one stud so it's just a shame they probably couldn't have figured out a way to attach that there but given that angle and things maybe it wasn't possible and of course with these spikes sticking out you know too much vigorous action and they're going to pop off but they're locked in there pretty tightly and when you're putting these rubber bands elastics on it's not really clear in the instructions how you sort of do it so the way that i found is you go through there once you bring it back over and you pass one end through the other and then that will give it that tightness there and then once you've had it sat on here for a while that then really locks in there and also to notice how I've got it on the upper side because originally I had it down on the underside like that and it was further down and again because that sliding mechanism is an extra bit of friction and that won't slide back properly so you need to be paying attention to that the instructions for this one are pretty good for the most part but it does feel like you are doing a lot of steps and you're being quite dense in them and there are a few little quirky ones and it's not a hundred percent clear so you can sort of see with this one here when you're putting the plates on it's good that it sort of points out where these red ones are but you don't ever get to see it all together so you can't really double check because when you go on to the next step you've then put on two of these long pieces here so you can't see well where is it meant to line up and there's a few little ones like that throughout this set of instructions so you are taking your sort of best guess but a lot of the times depending upon where the pins lie and just checking that your pins are all right you can sort of do it by a process of elimination the other quirky little step i found is around 179 they don't actually show you how to loop these over which i'll go through in a separate one and show you but this can be a real pain because it took me a while to figure out how to actually get this to work because it's just like here oh it goes in there but it's not that straightforward and simple so certainly for younger hands and things like that you can see people are going to run into this and go well how do i deal with this and there's no sort of other place in the instructions which show you how to do these little loops and knots which I think is really, really needed. Like I understand when you're building instructions, showing these flexible sort of pieces and things has always been a challenge, but this being such a critical part and step in it, if you can't get this, it's gonna drive you a little bit insane. And the other thing is when you do this assembly, it's like 179, but then these pieces don't actually connect into anything for quite a number of steps. So they're still floating there. Then you're going off and building this whole other assembly while well, these pieces are still just floating so you know this whole other assembly you're joining the assembly together they're still floating there still floating there it's that step 202 that they actually then go through and attach to something now this might seem overtly critical but the thing that i found when you put these pins in through that elastic 
for the first time, they have a tendency to fall out pretty quickly. So you need to be able to get them in there and make them taut and everything. So I think this is one of the things where they've built it and then probably just digital instructions and then not really tested it. Because for mine, you'd almost be wanting to be building this whole sub-assembly first before you put in that elastic on step 179. But again, that's just something which is really nuanced, but something to be aware of if you are building it. So when you finish the build for this, these are the leftover pieces. So you can see, probably used, I don't know, two thirds, three quarters of them. This model does seem to use a lot of the bits. Now, I just wanted to go through and give you a quick demonstration and show you how you get this sort of knot here on step 179. So I'll have that just as the pin piece there. You have your elastic. What you do is you grab one end of it and roll it over. So then you get these two loops here forming. And then you rotate the two loops in on themselves. So it comes over like that. Have your pin, put it in the middle there, and then you just gradually pull on this other end here. And that is how you get that in there. Now to give an overall review for the set, we're looking at the JM Bricklayer 30001 Medieval 3-in-1 set released in 2022 and it consists of the catapult, the bombard and the ballistic. It has a price of $39.99 US which is about £35 and about the same in euros. The set consists of 568 pieces. This comes in at about 6.2p per piece or about 7 cents per piece which anytime you're getting these days under 10 cents per piece on average you're doing quite well. Each of the models will take you about an hour, hour and a half to build. The build experience we get 75% because we took a few points off for critical points in the instructions either just not being there or really not clear. The builds are nice and challenging, but the instructions would benefit from just having a final polish to really smooth things out. Value for money we gave 90% because for what you get and the price you pay, we find it to be great value. You are getting three distinct models with three distinct firing mechanisms. The brick quality is on par with any other major brand. For playability, we gave this 75% because it is quite playable. Once you get beyond the firing mechanism and rolling it around, it doesn't really offer too much beyond that. For displayability, we gave it a solid 80%. The models display quite well and got some nice details in them but nothing that really knocks your socks off. The target market would appear to be those who like these sort of medieval type weaponry and military fans. It may also appeal to those people who like the beam and pin type building systems. The pros of the set is that it's a great value with three functioning models which are completely different from one another. There are a variety of building techniques which are used in it and it's generally a quality product. The cons would be that some of the instructions are not clear in key steps. There's no sort of little figures that come along with them and it's very much what you see is what you get. So in summary it's a great value three-in-one functioning set. If you're into this sort of subject matter and builds, then you're really going to enjoy this. So the overall score comes in at a solid and respectable 80%. What are your thoughts? Is this something you'd be interested in purchasing? Let us know in the comments below or just type the word JM and we'll know you've watched the complete video. If you've enjoyed, don't be afraid to hit that thumbs up button and or be super awesome and subscribe and share. Link around the video to where this can be purchased. If you'd like to see how my custom Sonic the Hedgehog mock compares with the official set, check out this video. Otherwise, here are some other videos you might be interested in. Thanks very much for watching this Family Bricks video and we'll see you in the next one.